it's weird to look at myself with my sty. Yeah, you got a little Popeye thing going on. <laughs> Flawless. <laughs> you started with arg, which is a famous Popeye quote. Arg. <laughs> Where, you know, he's just chewing on the naga hide of a, of a recliner. Sailor, not pirate. <laughs> Sorry, I screwed that. Yeah, he's in an organized Navy, so there's no reason to call him a, do the pirate voice. He is a sailor man. No one who was in any sort of Navy would eventually all become pirates. That's not how that pipeline worked. <laughs> That's true. They would only do that if, if they wanted to get their hands on some cool-ass hats. Otherwise, and some booty. <laughs> You know I mean? <laughs> no, I've never heard that play on words before. <laughs> Speaking of booty, this is Your Inner Child's an Idiot. This is the podcast where we look back on things from our childhood and see if they're any good to begin with. My name is DJ. I am Damon. So I gave you a little hint there. This is a... Did you? This is going to be uh, something we haven't visited a ton in our oeuvre. This is a raunchy teen comedy from the Ugh. 90s. In fact... One of the most influential uh, of the late 90s. Do you know what I'm talking about? Is it American Pie? It is American Pie, because I feel Don like- Don McLean, rolling in his grave. Is he dead? I don't think so, maybe. He's still singing the original version of American Pie, because it's like 49 hours long. Yeah. I'm always like, I think this is the second to last verse before it's like, nope, there's another verse that still gets faster than the last verse. We have had that requested on gigs, and we're always like, we will do it, but we will do a three-minute version, because that's ridiculous. And they're oh. like, we have to do the full one. And we're like, nope. <laughs> that counts no. as four songs. We're not doing that. Got to keep up with this jester, and he's like a metaphor for something. Is the jester Nixon? <laughs> he is the Chevy that is driven to the levee, I believe. Oh, okay. So the jester is a metaphor for another metaphor in the yes. song. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Don McLean. I wrote you off too soon. And the levy is the brink of the breaking of American democracy. So he drove us oh. to the, the levy, which is the edge of what was the destruction of America. The weird thing is, the good old boys are Eugene Levy. <laughs> <laughs> so how did this movie affect you when it came out? Because well, I'm a homosexual, so not much. I remember seeing it didn't it enter at- you into your Jason Biggs phase? <laughs> I mean, every gay man does go through a Jason Biggs phase, whether from American Pie or Orange is the New Black, I guess. <laughs> I didn't have a Jason Biggs phase. <gasps> I know. Everyone, Just sit down. Off. Sit down for a minute. I'm a unique flower, and so I didn't have that. I remember seeing it at a friend's house because it was kind of a thing. And I remember, I mean, I didn't see it in theaters. I waited until video and watched it then. Who's in this? There are some hotties and some mathematical hotties that I have no interest in. You know, the, the, there's Jennifer Coolidge. Yes. Jennifer's That's mom. the best thing we got out of this yeah. is Jennifer Coolidge, Jennifer Coolidge entered be- into the mainstream yeah. and the bloodstream of American <laughs> pop culture. We have, what's his name? Stifler. Yeah. Sean Mendez. What's his name? <laughs> Sean Locke. What is his name? I don't know. I don't know. I don't remember. It's a three name. He's a three name. Sean, Chad, Michael, Vincent. Ch- it's Sean Aston Martin, I believe. Ah, oh, yes, of course. Yes. Sean Aston Martin. We will look up these names. We will do a little bit. This is the off the dome part of the podcast, and I don't remember. Joseph Gordon-Levitt is in these. Is he? I don't as think well so. as I don't think so. Is he? I don't think so. I think he is, and I think this is a rare instance where he is in it with his doppelganger Thomas Ian Nicholas is also that guy is definitely in this yeah friend of the podcast from rookie of the year friend of the pod who else is in this fucking Natasha Leone is in this isn't she she? the friend of god I don't know now I'm I should have looked this I'm blurring all the Eugene Levy is in this yes he's the dad and was there a connection between this and the Christopher Guest first is that why that we have do we have Levy. both Levy and Coolidge yeah. in here? I hope so. Dear God, I hope so. Because we've got- Mostly the, where's my check so I can continue doing Christopher Guest okay. good movies. I looked it up because we're floundering so much with the names. Okay, we got Sean William Scott. There's a lot of flop sweat. Sean William Scott. Thank you. Allison Hannigan, of course. 
Oh, right. Okay. Also, that nondescript, attractive guy who you can't imagine actually having sex, Klein. Chris Klein. Chris Klein. Chris Klein. Yeah. Tara Reid, famously. <sighs> the guy who played Shitbreak or Paul Finch, Eddie K. Thomas. I don't, he was not. Shitbreak? That's what they call him in this movie because he leaves school. I think it's he leaves school to take a dump, which is a pretty good move if you can make it happen. And so they call him Shitbreak, which is actually a pretty clever nickname, too. I kind of <laughs> like that. I didn't remember that until just now. Am I misremembering and Joseph Gordon Levitt is not in these movies? I don't think he is. I think you made that up out of whole cloth. Thomas Ian Nicholas is in these movies. Yes. And uh, Shannon Elizabeth is in this. All of her. I have a feeling if you could keep the problematic corner warm for me, I feel yeah. like we're going to be visiting some of that. Yes, we'll be in there. Mina Suvari. Oh, yeah. John Cho. I didn't know that. Okay. Interesting. Okay, so we, we've got a lot of people to talk about. The people who took Hollywood by storm shortly after this. All those names we cherish to this day. Tell me how this affected the straight boys in your high school. Because like for us, it was... I wouldn't say this was a Tommy boy for us was like an obsession. Billy Madison. We were into like those comedies, this sort of raunchy comedy. I definitely thought it was funny and I definitely mm -hmm. liked it. And I'm sure in ways that now looking back on it, that could be considered problematic and we'll be reflecting on the pattern that, but we weren't like the guys who are like super into this movie. If I'm recalling correctly, we, yeah, I feel like it was, well, what year does this come out? 99. So we would Okay, so it would be 17. right when we would be able to go see a movie like this. Yeah. But I will say, like, I feel like the raunchy sex comedies had sort of disappeared from theaters for yeah. a while. I feel yeah. like in the 90s, there was this era of, no, make everything PG-13 so that more people can go see it. And there's still some of that around today. But this was an instance of like, no, we're going to make a hard R movie. Yeah. And sort of in the, I guess, I don't think as bad in terms of problematicness, but in the vein of Porky's and, and those sort of yeah. 80s, 70s, 80s movies. And I feel like that was a big thing. And I think because we were just at the right age for this to hit, I would have been in my senior year when this came out. I think within my class, it was a big thing. And I feel like I knew all sort of the jokes and gross out moments. And yeah. this one time at band camp stuff was already in the hallways of Beach Senior High School before I even saw one frame of this film. Yeah, I think a similar thing happened with the other, one of the other big movies around this era, the Austin Powers, oh, where yeah. there were, and I don't think this is the same level of movie in a lot of ways, but it's a different kind of raunchy film, but that one it was also <laughs> raunchy in its own right. And it was like, people would quote what I considered the wrong things. <laughs> I'm familiar with this logic. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, we, we talked about this a bit with Austin Powers, where it's like, no, no, you're liking it wrong. Gatekeeping. We call that gatekeeping yeah. at this point. You might call it douchebaggery overall. Being a pretentious snob, yeah. which is, you know, my bread and butter. It's one of my favorite things, it would seem. <laughs> I have a feeling that, you know, while we just lambasted ourselves for that sort of thinking, I feel like I'm going to watch this and there will be moments I really like that are not the quote, quote moments, yeah. the parts that don't involve a phallus in pastry. So you're saying that unlike when you were a kid, now you enjoy it correctly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now I'm finally able to see the nuance and the subtext of American Pie. <laughs> I'm glad to see that we've evolved and changed and grown. We'll be back after this. Please watch along with us. I'm going to play a little game for our commercial. Please. I'm going to start the sentence and then you, you end it. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Got it. My therapist says this is good. It's been. Ejaculate into a beer. <laughs> I mean, topical, but doesn't really help with our Patreon commercial. True. How would me saying one week also help with the Patreon commercial? Uh, Patreon. Here, let's start it again. You're right. You're right. You're right. Hold on. Let me clear my head. Let me get it out of my system. Do, do, Go do. ahead. Do, 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 do. Recording a woman against her will. Oh, no. Oh, okay. We don't do that on our... Oh, on our oh, podcast. oh, I see. I see. I see. I see. I see. Okay. Okay. I was in the wrong headspace. Give me yeah. one more shot. I'm not sick, but I'm not well. Suck me beautiful. <laughs> Good? 
Am I getting closer each time? Yeah, you pretty much got it. Patreon.com slash Trainer Travels and Idiot. <laughs> Become a patron of the show. Help us make more of these witty references. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do I have like the Susan Lucci filter on? Do I look blurry to you? Yeah, you want to do a little wipey wipe? <laughs> this whole movie is a problematic corner. I don't know when to pop into the problematic corner, but we should probably recap first at least and then maybe pop in there. I think the right thing to do would be to end. Then we'll want to do a trading spaces on the problematic corner, spend a good weekend getting it ready for this movie. And then this movie will come in and and tell Hildy that they didn't want it to be brown. That's a reference to nothing. Again, I don't know what you're talking about. (laughs) You know what? Why don't you recap your movie? This was your movie that you wrote and directed. Yes. Why don't you go ahead and recap it for us? Yeah. There's some teen youths, some friends who decide they make a pact that they are going to have sexual intercourse, consensual sexual intercourse before they graduate. I just had a vision of a completely different movie that I would probably direct where I'm like, there's a loophole, boys, where you can all lose your virginities. (laughs) It did not say... (laughs) It had to be heterosexual. That was not in the rules. And most of them do. Wait. American Pie. Let's see. Does someone not? It's said that Oz and Heather don't. It is said. It is, it is written in <laughs> the It has tome. been prophesied that Oz shall not lose his virginity. And, you know, we don't see... He does say that, but I was wondering if he was just not kissing could He could have just been being a gentleman. It, they did, you know, canoodle. That's the great thing about American Pie. It's open to interpretation. Yeah. We never really recover from that as a society. Whether <laughs> It's pretty much the Mulholland Drive of teen raunchy sex comedies. That's, I mean, shenanigans in between, but that's, uh, that's pretty much the size of it. Oh, well, that was it. Okay. Was <laughs> I feel like we're getting into a good groove of just like, what two sentences is fine. You either watch the movie or you didn't. If you don't remember this film, you're not listening to this episode. <laughs> We've got our characters. I'll go through. We got. Oh, uh, do we have our characters? I definitely remember all of them, but I'm going to go ahead and let you list them we for got, me. We got Jim, our main character. That's Jason yep. Biggs, starring mm-hmm. role, just the beginning of his meteoric rise to doing more of these films. <laughs> and then we've got Allison Hannigan as um, Michelle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. One time at Bandcamp. Uh, we've got Chris Klein as Oz. Mm-hmm. Ozymandias, uh, who eventually, it turns out he's the one who destroyed the wor- er, the Earth's uh, population hey, or whatever. you don't gotta spoil wa- the Watchmen to do our <laughs> American Pie recap. If you don't remember the Watchmen, you're not listening <laughs> to this episode. <laughs> We have friend of the show, close friend of the show, Thomas Ian Nicholas, who plays Kevin. Mm-hmm. We've got Tara Reed as Vicky. We've mm-hmm. got Sean William Scott in a star turn as Stifler. Yeah. Also a career that led to doing more of these films. <laughs> yeah. We've got a starer turn with Jennifer Coolidge as Stifler's mom. God bless her. The delightful Natasha Leone as Jessica. Shannon Elizabeth as Nadia, the Czechoslovakian at the time. Mm-hmm. For an exchange student, we have Eddie K. Thomas as Finch or Shitbreak. <laughs> yeah. And we have Chris Owen as the Shermanator. I don't know why I wrote him on the cast list. <laughs> <laughs> Did you mention Eugene Levy yet? Yeah, Eugene Levy was going to be my last night. Eugene Levy oh, okay. as Jim's daddy, who does not get named in this film, but later is is named Noah. But Oh, Eugene. I didn't. Okay. I didn't even notice that he was. So we had Stifler's mom and Jim's dad. Yes. Me and Tyler did watch the trailers to the rest of the quadrilogy, and I think eventually Stifler's mom and uh, Jim's dad get together. Oh, it doesn't work out with Finch? I guess not. No. And I like that you weren't concerned about Jim's mom. She uh, dies of cancer in the third one. Oh, It's a really heartbreaking turn. No, (laughs) I think they just get a divorce. Can you imagine? American Pie, this is not your lane. This is, <laughs> it's kind of like do that. when a sitcom has like a very special episode and you're like, why oh, are yeah. we doing this? <laughs> it's sweeps. Well, NBC gets a tax break from the government if they have one to two very special episodes per season. So that's why A Different World is dealing with stealing this episode. Is that what Sweeps Weeks is? is? It's, not, it's not so much that they're trying to get advertisers to sign up for the next season. It's that they're trying to get that sweet, sweet government money. They're trying to get values passed on to the American people. That's what they're trying to do. 
We're sweeping away the filth, the filth from of the immorality. Yes. That's good. Just a quick thing before we, I, I feel like we got to jump into a problematic corner just for all of it. Well, just, I mean, not all of it. Go ahead. Just to set up some things. But before I think, <laughs> let's define our terms. We need some real clarity here. Mm-hmm. Because Lauren asked me, and I was like, I think it's a little bit up to their interpretation, but I have an answer. What are the bases? When you were growing up, what are the bases? Ah, interesting. The heterosexual bases, I assume? I mean, this movie, I would say, was probably talking about the heterosexual bases. Yes, of course. Yeah. This movie was definitely only talking about the heterosexual bases. I want to hear about the homosexual bases, but let's do that second. Because you're third a second base class. Is penetrative sex in gay, in gay bases. First, second, third, and home run are all just penetrative sex. Yeah, I guess the... Ba- um, let me think. I thought first base is over the shirt action. Second base, under the shirt action. Third base, some finger blasting. Yep. And fourth base, home, as it's known in American baseball, <laughs> in Canadian baseball, of course, it's fourth and fifth base, uh, is uh, penetrative sex. I always thought I was kissing was, or I was told, I should say, kissing was first base. Mm-hmm. Second base was unclear whether it was over or under, but any sort of boob stuff. And then uh-huh. third base is pants stuff. Yeah. And then home run is penetrative sex. And I have a question. Lauren made a good point. She's like, what is second base for the girl? That was my question. Go on. And the answer is boob stuff. This is not for the girl. No girl is talking about this. Right. No, that is not true. Of course, categorically, but generally speaking. Yeah. I'm trying to think. Yeah. I mean, is there a step before? I mean, there's kissing. Is there a step before I am now holding your penis in my hand? (laughs) At least a beclothed or unclothed penis. Are you talking about in-, in a heterosexual coupling where the woman is also formulating her bases? Yeah, because I mean, you wouldn't. I mean, you could feel up a guy's chest, but I don't. That doesn't probably count as a base. That's like whenever. Feel free to do whenever. I just realized that, and forgive me for only just now realizing this. I am a cis male, so I'm still just a fucking idiot. But <laughs> I just realized we're treating women bodies as a baseball diamond. You don't say. (laughs) It's just, they are just a faceless field of play for us to manipulate. Now, you might be onto something about maybe the whole attitude of teens in this movie, and... I've become concerned... Teens of the 90s, to be honest, about... I've become concerned that we are not treating women well in the society. Is that possible? I think it's possible. I don't want to say with any certainty other than absolute certainty. Even in the certainty. golden age of 1999, when we were all just making fun of Monica Lewinsky's weight constantly on national TV. Oof. Oof. It was a great time to be alive. Let's just go ahead and pop into the problematic corner. Let's go. Are we just going to? Okay. Let's go. Ooh, watch out now, y'all. Damon's got a problem, baby. Ooh, watch out now, y'all. Let him know about it. Now, why do we build it so far away? It's still in the baseball field, but it's in like right field. It's where like the ball, the shortstop, caroms around. And coach the, and is the there. <laughs> fielders like running around. It's like, oh, can't quite get it. Okay. So mm-hmm. <laughs> the purpose of the problematic corner is to sort of encapsulate the things that might kind of take you out of this Quarantine movie. Quarantine them. That's not really going to work with this movie, but what we're going to do our best because the kind of the whole thing exists within the problematic corner. Mm-hmm. One of the main things I want to talk about is just the fact that Casey Affleck pops out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problematic corner? Wait, is he problematic? He has been, it's alleged, he's been sued for sexual assault. It's not It's not good. But never convicted. So, you know, because this is a court of so law. allegations, so. And because I definitely think he listens to the show. I just want to be sensitive to that, that it's all alleged. Yeah. Well, we started as a Gone Baby Gone podcast, and then it just evolved yeah. into what it is now. <laughs> It used to be called Damon Baby Damon, which is another reason that we changed it because it didn't make any sense. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and it was DJ by the Sea for a while. That was fun. <laughs> okay, so Casey Affleck was there. I was thrown off by that. And what was he? He was Thomas Ian Nicholas's brother, older brother. Who, okay, who's in college? Reveals the location of the of the, the tome. Yeah, the magic tome that teaches him how to pleasure a woman. Another thing that just exists in the problematic corner is like female agency overall. Yeah, I mean, female agency in general, uh, it's not this movie's bread and butter. Females at all. I mean, all the women 
I mean, one of my main problems, this is my problem with the problematic corner trying to put this movie in there, is that everything intersects with something problematic. So I just we're just going to have to be here for the entire movie. Because I wanted to talk about how all the characters are so poorly defined in this movie, aside from maybe Stifler and Finch, that all the other guys in between those two extremes are just this like shade of gray. Like I could not identify any characteristics of one from the other, if I'm being honest. Yeah. And the women are even worse because they're all just like vaginas on legs. Like that is the purpose of these women. They're not really defined at all. We got to move around somehow. <laughs> You know? It's true. How are we going to get these vaginas <laughs> in here? Wait a minute. They have legs. Brilliant. Right at that town. <laughs> They're just all, I mean, aside from Natasha Leone, whose character is only saved by the fact that she is played by Natasha Leone, who is a charm bomb and is always charming in every role she plays. All the other women, I, I could not tell you anything about them, aside from the ones that are punchlines, like Alison Hannigan's character who is more defined in the later movies, because I guess she marries Jim based on the trailers I saw. In this, she is a joke. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, Mina Suvari, I mean, she says, oh, people think I'm a a good girl. And then, I mean, that's all she says. And then there's nothing really that interesting about her. All we know is she's just suddenly there when Chris Klein starts taking jazz. And because she's, the camera keeps leering at her, I'm like, oh, she must be the character that he is interested in. We don't, it's so nondescript. Everyone in this movie is so nondescript. Yeah. Do you not feel that way? No, I do. I felt like I was confused. The boys are all, they seem to be popular enough. They don't seem to be like bullied or picked on. They're going to cool parties held by Stifler, the most popular guy in school or the party animal or whatever, the Jim Belushi of the, the school. But there's, I couldn't tell you anything about them. Like, they are not defined from each other in any way, aside from Finch, who drinks coffee and crosses his legs. Everyone yes. else is nondescript. Yeah, they do kind of overlap a lot. I guess Chris Klein is supposed to be the jock, right? Yes, yeah. And, and Jim yeah. is our everyman. Yes, and Kevin is the sort of, he's in the couple. He's like the girlfriend guy. That's his defining characteristic. Yeah. Interesting. None of them are particularly funny either. It's not a very one-liner heavy uh, movie. No, I mean, it's got some quotes, but while we're in the problematic corner, I just also want to point out the, I've read this word before, but I had to look it up because I, and now I'm on a, some sort of list somewhere, but it's not pedophilia when you're interested in a late teenager. It's ephibophilia, which is, Ooh. I believe what Stifler's mom would categorize as uh, her affliction. <laughs> right, because she likes scotch aged 18 years, just like her men. Had to make sure that we knew that he was 18, although the actor was not. Oh, wow. He was a- well, you never see them do anything to each That's other exactly on camera, why. so there you go. <laughs> the closest I came to liking a character, I did like Chris Finch. Not Chris Finch, that's a character from The Office, the British Office, Peter Finch. Is that his name? I actually don't know Shit what- Shitbrick? It's uh, Finch, I actually don't know what his Finchay. first name is. Finch-A, Finch-A. Oh my God, he's so low in the thing. It's just Finch in here. The main on. problematic, I feel like this is going to be the sort of headline. This falls under female agency, but this is like the headline uh, problematic element is the fact that they live stream oh my God, yes. Nadia in Jim's bedroom and taking off her clothes. And this was the yeah. one that I mean, that is like outright offensive because it's illegal in some sense. Yeah, I was going to say it's like convictable. As opposed to just sort of gross. It is both. Let's set this up because it's grotesque. Nadia, who I couldn't tell you if she has interest in Jim at all. She seems to. She seems to because all of a sudden she's just in his house undressing and then masturbating to his porno rags. Jim tries to approach her at the party earlier and just kind of fumbles. But she's like Mm. looking at him. She clearly seems to have some sort of crush on him. And he... Obviously has a crush on her. So like, right. And she immediately wants to, she's the one that proposed, hey, let's study together. Right. And she's like, I'll be out from ballet practice. I'll need to change while I'm at your house. So he takes that opportunity to film her undressing in his room and then send a private URL to his friends. He only tries to send it to his friends, Damon. So that's where it's okay. There's a complete accident that he sends it to everyone else. Yeah. The rules state that you can send it to up to five individuals against a person's will. But beyond that, that is when when the law has Your Honor, I only attempted the murder. Is there a (laughs) crime in that? (laughs) 
<laughs> yes. Do they give a Nobel Prize for attempted chemistry? <laughs> that is a Sideshow Bob quote, I feel. Yeah, <laughs> just, just in case anybody thinks we're funny. Just in case <laughs> grammar comes after me. Yeah, so that's disgusting. She's not even, I mean, she's not, I mean, this would not absolve him, but she's not even engaged in any sexual activity with him. She's just getting undressed. Well. From my memory of the movie, I thought they were like hooking up and he's well, filming Well, she does it, but no. start to pleasure herself. Right, apropos of nothing, because this movie thinks that women act like they do in porno movies. She decides to sort of take her sweet time in getting undressed, go through Jim's things, you're not off the hook, Nadia. That is impolite. You don't go through people's stuff just because you're changing out of your ballet thing. You can also go to prison for that. <laughs> Only in California. I was going to say. And yeah. she it's, starts it's masturbating. It's gauche, not so much li- illegal. <laughs> she starts masturbating to his corner rags that he keeps in his bedside table. And then he comes in while she's getting undressed. And then she's like, oh, come sit with me. Natural. She wouldn't be offended at all. She wouldn't be bothered. Then Jim finds out that he accidentally sent the link to the whole school and she's sent back to Chechnya or whatever. It was Czechoslovakia, which- Czechoslovakia. Sorry. I should have known that. Would be either the Czech Republic or Slovakia now. <laughs> right. They've got a thriving gay porn industry. I should I have remembered that Czechoslovakia was, was involved. So the fact that she is sent back home, that her life is completely overturned, is sort of just treated as a throwaway line. And then later, during the epilogue over the credits, we see Jim just having a a webcam conversation with her. It's very sweet and and fine. Not so much a webcam conversation as... Oh, right. He gets dressed. He he starts stripping. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In in much the way that he did when they were in his bedroom. The whole thing is, it's just the setup of it is gross and really not cool. And I think it's emblematic of sort of the... A lot of the problems of this movie, which is like... It's kind of got this, it's got an overtone of incel energy, of the like the nice yeah. guy, I deserve sex from women, uh, that kind a of A woman thing. smiled at me at a party, so naturally I can film her getting undressed. Which, this is not room. a defense, but I also think if we're talking about a realistic depiction of teens in the 90s, is not necessarily off base. <laughs> <laughs> no, or teens now. More teens now, but less so, but still. Yeah. Or grown men now. Yes, definitely that. That's probably the crown jewel of offense. The rest is like standard raunchy sex comedy yes. offense. But that, I mean, I that also is emblematic of how this movie like treats female characters. They just sort of are open to any advances that come towards them. And they're sort of treated like porno ladies. It's obvious that the person writing this is not a woman and doesn't have experience with women. It just feels very, they're just always just going along with it. They misunderstand things. And then the minute the guy apologizes or makes some modicum of effort, they're like, oh, you are fantastic, Chris Klein. Thank you for running over here and just getting changed sweatily into your jazz choir outfit. Just to replace this actually much better singer (laughs) that... Came up. That, that raises, this is not really a problematic let's corner. Get, let's thing, get out of the corner and then we can okay, talk about it. We can it. get out of there and we'll, we can dip back in if necessary. Ooh, watch out now, y'all. Damon's got a problem, baby. Ooh, watch out now, y'all. Let him know about it. This movie has way too many fucking characters in it. <laughs> I felt like by act three, I feel like most of your characters should be introduced. And I felt like characters just kept coming in. And I'm like, wait, who's the coach now? And Mm. then this, this, the kid in the singing competition was like my prime example, where all of a sudden I was supposed to be aware that he's a jerk and needs his comeuppance. I'm like, who is he? He's had like one aside off camera. And all of a sudden I'm supposed to be invested in him, like getting kicked out of, out of the singing competition. And the movie, like, even gives him a beat of being humiliated because this other girl is like, you fucking suck, man. Yeah. And I'm like, who is? I don't even know his name. And what annoyed me about that is, like, John Cho plays a character in the same fucking jazz choir. I'm like, you already had him at the party scene at the beginning. Use him. You've already established this character. But I felt like they were just kept coming in with new things. I'm like... You have four guys. Could you spend just five minutes differentiating one from the other rather than introducing random characters throughout this fucking movie? There's a little tidbit. And again, with all these sort of behind the scenes quotes, too, I don't want to lean in too much too much that that the writer of this movie like wrote it within like a month after just watching Porky's and 
Fast mm-hmm. Times at Ridgemont High. And I think that the nuance of those movies and the <laughs> timeline of writing it over the course of like four weeks or whatever it was right. comes across in stuff like that, where it's just like, <laughs> it's not, I will say it's not long. You know what? It is not long. It is, as they said on SNL, a short ass movie, which I appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> um, some of that stuff could have been like one more or a couple more passes with the pen could have been like, Hey, what if we use that guy that we've already got? Lose some of these characters. We have a future superstar John Cho here. Why don't we, he's, um, popularizing the term MILF in the first scene. Now we are, we've, we've already established his character. I don't know what his name is, but he does say MILF in the first scene. And then he later shows up in jazz choir having very few lines. And then. You know, he's just sort of around he's there. And I'm like, hey, that's John Cho. There, there he is. He wasn't John Cho yet. He wasn't the John that's Cho. That's right. He was a John Cho. I do think there's something. Oh, and Shermanator. That, sorry, not to interrupt you. Yeah. That was another thing. I was like, I don't care about Sherman. I don't need Sherman to have his comeuppance. He's like barely a character. And aside from like his styling, which grossed me, all the spikes and points on him. The movie also, once again, like tries to make him out as a villain at the end. Like, he didn't actually lose his virginity. I'm like, I guess we showed him. Yeah. He was the idiot who spent time talking to this girl, like probably the most respectable man. Well, maybe not that respectable because he does seem to insinuate that he slept with her, even though he didn't. Now that I think about it. But like the movie really wants me to be invested in fucking Sherman. I'm like... I don't care. Can you spend any time on these other characters that you build as our heroes? Especially when one of our main four, Finch, like does lie or like has lies told about him to like build his reputation. So Mm. it's like. And that's all off camera. Like that's like a a reveal. It was probably the most charming thing. Like he's paid Natasha Leone's character to sort of build him up amongst the girl populace at the school. And they actually have what almost counts as a cute moment at the prom scene where they're dancing together and she's like, you have no chance of scoring with me. And he's like, ah, yeah, I know. But it's kind of a, a cute moment. Yeah. I do want to say there is some, one of the accurate things about this. I do feel like there's this kid, the, always the kid that like acts older. You know, he's Finch's, uh-huh. <laughs> was that you? <laughs> Finch's. I don't want to talk about it right now. Drinking coffee. I mean, I was balding at 17, so. Yeah, drinking a mochaccino, I should say. Mm-hmm. And he's crossing his legs and he like, you know, <laughs> wants a single malt whiskey and he, yada, yada. He, he's reading books in the hallway like a fucking jerk. Yeah, uh, poops at home, which if given the chance, I think you should all poop at home. If in any situation, if pooping at home is an option, take it. Absolutely. And this wasn't my high school, but my middle school didn't have stall doors. What? Like, what the fuck? It didn't have stall doors, so I had to poop at home. I'm not going to poop in the open. What are you talking about? There were walls, but I mean, just wide open. That's ridiculous. Wide open front. It's middle school. This is cutthroat. It's Survivor out here. You can't be having me poop in front of everyone. You insane? That's very prison-esque. Yeah. They also didn't have toilet seats. And one of the, you had to avoid one toilet because someone was making prison gin. So (laughs) just as an aside, in case anybody doesn't know, and I don't know if I've already (laughs) said this on the podcast, but same toilet, stall door, toilet seat situation at Versailles. If you've ever, I don't know, had the shits when you're at Versailles walking around the gardens (laughs) and you really have to go, it's a bad place to poop. There's no doors in Versailles. They have a hall of mirrors, but no doors. This was in, in the garden. So there's there are public restrooms, but there's no... I had to... There definitely was no seat. I'm trying to remember if there was a door. And there definitely was no toilet paper. So I had to use my overseas minutes to call my darling wife to... I don't remember. She, I think she brought me something. Kleenex or something. Oh, I don't know. She oh, didn't wow. just like have toilet paper. But it worked out okay. But I'm just saying... Maybe if you had looked, there would have been three shells. That's probably what it was. Wow. Well, that was it. The Versailles hot dogs don't have the Versailles hot dogs. That was the Louvre, the hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I can't get over this. I've already referenced it, depending on which edit we decide to go with for the final cut, but coming in beer. Yeah, sure. Now everyone's built, every bedict person is built different. <laughs> I don't know about you, and we don't have to go into it if you don't feel comfortable. But when I'm about to ejaculate, I usually don't have the wherewithal or time to suddenly study my surroundings, grab an out of place half drunk beer, and then sort of turn my body to unload into it. Yeah. That is the most ludicrous thing I'd ever seen. Just 
get a fucking Kleenex like a normal Christian person. Or like well, not a Kleenex, those are useless, but something who's like, hold on, honey, into this beer. It's gross out humor, and it was gross. So I guess it was it was gross. And I was also confused by Stifler because look, <laughs> I've been around the block a few times. I <laughs> Even in my knowledge, I don't know if I would be able to identify. I would understand that the beer would taste weird. It doesn't, yeah. I don't know if I would identify immediately what was weird about it. Or that it would make you vomit necessarily, especially like volume to volume. <laughs> right, he was. His load compared was to a real, full cup of, like a full glass of beer. We're talking it sounds like, like he had a Louvre hot dog. Eight to ten ounces of beer. <laughs> he had a sip of beer, a glug of beer. And, and gum. compared to how much could it possibly be? In jizz. Four or five cups? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I just think, I think you'd be like, this beer tastes different. And it's mm-hmm. salty and weird. And I don't care for it. But I don't think it would immediately... Or it taste like cantaloupe. Is there cantaloupe in this beer, possibly? Someone have a healthy breakfast? I mean, he must have... I guess you could potentially realize what it was. And that the thought of it being so heterosexual makes you vomit. Because mm-hmm. really, the thought of anything... You know, if it unheterosexual, makes you, well, just anything can if it makes you feel sick. You, you know, it's self fulfilling prophecy. I, I feel like. Have you tried saying "suck me beautiful" to anyone? Has that ever worked in your? No, I feel I haven't. I haven't. Even though you know I'm a Lothario and <laughs> a Don Juan, uh huh, and I haven't tried that. It does seem like something I'd love to hear from someone who cared about me. Maybe from Chris Klein, though. I can't believe he he is such uh, he's another fucking I can't tell if his character is terrible or he is terrible. I want to say possibly the latter. Chris Klein is a very handsome person who seems like he like got his handsome looks from a genie who is like, but you also have to have terrible hair. Like he has the worst hair for on a hot person I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Like, it's almost like negating the other 95% of him down below. It's like, this hair is bad. What is happening here? Would you have gone for it in 1999, Year of Our Lord? No. Even then, I was like, what's wrong with him? Why is he doing this? It seems like he made a a deal with the devil or something. (laughs) We'll put you in as many American Pie movies as you want. And one Farrelly Brothers movie that no one saw. But you have to slick back your hair for no reason. You're going to have to skip one of the American Pie movies for rehab. <laughs> Wait, is that true? Yes. So, Aww, Chris. Hope you, hope you feel good about yourself. I'm the one who brought it up, but I'm going to make you feel bad about it. <laughs> <laughs> and he also is a charisma vacuum. <laughs> he is, I don't know what, like he sounds so blank that he almost seems sweet, like almost clueless, like a puppy. And so when he says, suck me beautiful, I'm like, what the hell was that? It gave me emotional lip whiplash because he seems so nice. And then he tries this suck me beautiful line. He's apparently like, n- apparently not hooking up with a college girl, but going on casual dates with a college girl who is teaching them the ropes. Don't worry, she never appears again. And we get no more information about them. I'm also like, she's like super honest with him. She doesn't seem mad. She seems like thinks that's ridiculous and tells him so and i'm like why are we not going at least hanging out with her even if you don't hook up like she's clearly got something to teach you right and then she just disappears for the rest of the movie because she's a woman and who gives a shit fair enough she won't sleep with him so why would she even be in the movie the scenes of chris klein and mina savari acting at each other or (laughs) god save us singing at each other oh I was a little angry. I was like, these people aren't even that good. And then I remembered what actual high school, high school choir yeah. Yeah. <laughs> things were. I'm like, of course a high school would do. What song do they sing at each other? Need the shelter of someone's arm. There yeah. you were. There you were. I gotta stop. That's uh, no more singing, actually. How sweet it seconds, is that's to it. be loved by yeah. you. They sing that at each other. It's terrible, but realistically terrible. Yeah, yeah, I mean... Did you hate Mina Savari as well, or did you just feel like she had nothing to act against? She wasn't great in this movie. I don't... I mean, the only other thing that I can think of seeing her in was American Beauty. Gotta have the word American in it somewhere. Wow. Yeah, that's her rule. And I don't remember... I haven't seen that in a very long time, so I don't remember it well enough to remember her role. I don't remember being off... As off put by her her acting as I was in this. But it was just... It was them being wooden around each other in the same scenes. It was like, ooh, feel the chemistry. (laughs) 
<laughs> it's overwhelming why he would chase her, her, chase her down and leave her as a lacrosse team. I didn't think she was bad. I just thought she had nothing to work with. And not to mention, I mean, him and the script combination, what's she going to do? She just has to wince at everything because she's so offended by all these boys. Just apropos of nothing, is American Pie, which is so very much attached to this movie series now, is that a phrase? Like, as, mer- as American as apple pie is a thing. Yeah. American pie. That's... Pie by a Miss American pie. Miss American pie. Mm-hmm. But American pie. By I don't itself? know if you caught this because it's, it's a subtle scene, but he sticks his erect penis into a pie in the middle of the movie. Okay, so. Did you catch that? It's an Easter egg. You know, I got up and left halfway mm-hmm. through, so I think I missed that. You made yourself a sandwich at the exact <laughs> wrong moment. <laughs> I went to Run P, the app that tells you when to go, and it said that that wasn't really important to the plot, so I, I skipped <laughs> that part. I mean, I, again, I don't want to like pick on this movie, but- You don't want to pick on this like movie. The, that's the whole point of this podcast. Pick oh, on yeah, that's movie. right. I do want to pick on this movie, but all the raunchy parts are just so half-baked- pun that it just makes like when he the movie opens with him masturbating to scrambled porn a rite of passage and his mom walks in and he doesn't even like fumble or get startled he just sort of covers his dick up with a pillow he mutes the tv just turn it off he doesn't even mute the tv it's still going he tries to yeah it's such a fucking, I'm like, lock your door. And why are you bothered by your mom walking into the room while you have this on? Like, do anything. I was just like, why is this happening? Later on, I mean, he talks to the boys, the gang, and they tell him that fingering a girl is like sticking your fingers in a warm apple pie. What a coincidence. Later on in the movie, his mom bakes him an apple pie, his favorite, all for him, apparently. And rather than like, I mean, even if you want to like take this to its raunchy extremes, take the pie upstairs. Why would you fuck the pie on the island of the kitchen? The only thing I can get in this, I only noticed it this time, is the note does says, I'll be back late. And yeah. I don't know why, maybe he assumed that also his dad would be gone until he late. He thought his dad was dead. That was one of the cut plot lines is the comical misunderstanding where he thinks that Eugene Levy is dead. Yeah, and we're all the worse for it. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Naturally, of course, Eugene Levy walks in while he's banging that pie. Have you, and l- were you ever long. caught? Um, caught master- banging a pie? Masturbating, touching yourself, doing anything raunchy. Aside from the very traumatic memory I had as a child, I had noticed how my penis works while uh, my bath was being drawn. And I mean, I'm like three or four. Oh, okay. And I noticed how my penis works and it, it got hard. And I was like, mom, look, look at what it does. And she's like, don't ever touch it. That's what happens when you touch it too much. She was doing her best. <gasps> That's what happened. That's why you're gay. I think I had some close calls, but nothing gym level. No. Yeah. Nothing gym level. I definitely was, I don't remember if it was like scramble porn or something, but I was watching something on the TV, which I had in my room at my mom's house. And she Walked in and I did like the quick turn off and like rolled over kind of mm-hmm. thing. And then she knew that I was awake and then I had the TV on. I don't know if she knew anything more than that. But she yeah. then goes, go to sleep. And then she just closed the door. <laughs> yeah, I think I had a close call where I was exploring my body, which is a healthy thing you can do. Don't do the thumbs down. Don't do the thumbs down when I'm talking about masturbation, Riverside. <laughs> That's fucked up. I was exploring my body, which is a healthy thing to do. Perfectly. And I think I got a knock on the door. Mom was bringing like laundry. And then, you know, I managed to <laughs> reassemble myself. Put a huge pillow and over. And I hadn't gotten very far into it. So, I mean, the whole scene that I, that I like to lay out. And she was like, who are you talking to? And I was like, oh, I was singing to myself. <laughs> you? Why was there talking? I don't think there was talking. I think there was a sound. Oh. <laughs> And then she said to me, don't touch it. That's what happens when you touch it too much. I thought I told you this. I feel like I've definitely at some point told you this, but there was a point, probably more prepubescent, that I thought that masturbating was just like pulling the pants down and just like leaving it. Just handle. There you go. Just like. Done. Look, ma. <laughs> don't say look, ma. I thought it was literally like you would a doorstop on, a, you know, attach the house. It was just like. Brrr. That's what I thought it was until completion. Actually, I don't think I knew, I guess, until you were bored, until I didn't know that there was an actual <laughs> literal climax that could happen. <laughs> well, that's enough of that. Good night, honey.
I do want to point out that kind of along the lines of what we're talking about and this movie, like <laughs> I does think I do think I does think along those lines. I do think this movie does get some things right in terms of the real post pubescent obsession with yeah. sexuality and like relationships and it's like it means everything. And I think that a lot of kids are idiots. Most of us were idiots. Some of us still are idiots. And sex education in this country is a mess, and morality in this country is also a yeah, fucking mess. Yeah, there's a lot of shame. Those things combine into... It's weird that, like, consent is something that's, like, the importance of consent is a relatively, like, <laughs> it's not completely new, but it's a thing that's, like, they wouldn't have talked about that much. It would have been like, hey, mm -hmm. it's important to have consent, but then they would have, like... Oh, she smiled at you from across the room? <laughs> You're in. You're in. You over. And then, you know, there's the romantic teen comedies are like, never give up on this love. You're destined and stuff like that, which, you know, don't... Yeah, that's true, Don't get too, your yeah. moralities from a movie, but at the same time, it's like, you know, this is... This is what you grow up with and you, you've got all these things and these hormones and you're like, you know, and I do think that this gets some of that accurate. Yeah. And just the sort of it's gross and boys are very gross. Uh, heterosexual boys. Certainly mm. in 1999, I was. I could practically smell Jim's room yeah. when we panned across it. I was like, I mean, I was set poor, poor Nadia. She doesn't deserve yeah, this. Right. Exactly. Just like being in that room. And Jason Biggs in this in this role is very sweaty. And apparently, like, where they were filming <laughs> was very hot. So there, there's that, too. But also, like... Everyone is sweaty. And I think I, I won't fault the movie for that. Because I feel like that's an HDTV yes. problem. But everyone was so moist in this it's movie. pretty they were accurate, glossy. I think, to <laughs> 17 true, true. Everyone looked like they kind of stunk. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, everyone... Lock your doors. Although I will say, it is a thing to say, if you're a kid and you're living in my house, you can't lock your door. Like, I, we weren't allowed to lock our doors. Like, you could. It's not like there was a mechanism, but the deal is, you know, you shouldn't be doing anything that would prevent us from knocking in and getting, mm -hmm. you know, come in and coming in. But... But you should be doing, I, I would argue, you should be doing something uh, at that age that would require locking your doors. Let me fucking jack That's it. what I'm saying. I don't Let know if alone. that's 100% healthy either. Yeah. Like, yeah. Stuff like what we were talking about. Your mom, that's, don't touch it. <laughs> that's not good either. And I would say, Jim's dad. If that makes it into our video real clip, I'm not posting that one. She follows us. I can't post I it. absolutely. I don't think she listens to us, but I won't post a clip. <laughs> The maligning that that a saint of a woman. Jim's dad is pretty cool about all this. He's very funny because it's Eugene Levy and he's very funny. And apparently he improvised a lot of his dialogue, if not all of it. And that checks out. He's very <laughs> awkward. He's trying his best. He's being yeah. very open and he's trying to be like, say he buys the reason that Jim has nudie mags is because his dad mm -hmm. buys them for him to be like here's yeah. the female form here's the clitoris and 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 i love it that jim's like i know where the clitoris and he's like oh do you oh okay i didn't realize <laughs> and then they're like arguing and it's pretty funny also dollars to donuts jim does not know where the clitoris is. he does in a health class sense perhaps but not in a <laughs> practical sense but yeah Jim's dad's being pretty cool about it. He's trying. He's trying. Yeah, I, I thought that would, he was trying, and I appreciated that. All the SCTV, all the Christopher Guest alums in this movie uh, like kept it afloat, which is just oh, yeah. the two, right? It's just the two. We just have Jennifer Coolidge yeah. and, and Eugene. I keep saying SCTV. I mean just the Christopher Guest uh, troupe. Yeah. I don't love Stifler's mom as a character. What she, like she decides to bone down with her son's friend. <laughs> Who's in mm -hmm. high school? That's pretty gross. I only liked it as a humiliation for. I Stifler. like it as a humiliation for Stifler. and it's the Mrs. Ro they play Mrs. Robinson. That's pretty funny, and I just love Jennifer Coolidge because who doesn't? She's great, and it's fun. I mean, it's fun. I mean, this is when she entered like into the consciousness of yeah. America. She brought us the word MILF. Really, popular. she's very charming in this, and that does bring up Stifler, who's. Maybe aside from Stifler's mom, by association, he is also remembered from this movie. He's ostensibly our villain, but also friends with our... our I mean, he's not really a villain villain, yeah. but he is friends with our heroes, which also, I feel like, casts a poor light upon them. Yeah. Because he fucking sucks. He sucks, but he's got the cool house. He's clearly got, like, the nice and houses. his mom seems pretty chill about and it. They're, like, they're cool with him having... out in the basement. They're cool with him having parties, and they do say at one point that, that you know, because they have this big after-prom party at Stifler's lake house, that they're like, mm -hmm. this is why we've been friends with Stifler, was for mm -hmm. this moment. And the one guy, or I think it was Finch, he's like, we're friends with Stifler? 
which is kind of funny. Well, Finch makes no qualms about the fact that he hates they are, Stifler. They are frenemies, I believe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel like Stifler is definitely another, you mentioned he's kind of the, what is Belushi's character from Animal House? Yeah, Bluto. I've never actually seen I haven't either. We should probably watch it because I I feel like this is very much in the vein of that. He's the kind of like party animal guy. He's like the party director. And he does kind of get his comeuppance because his friend of me sleeps with his mom and humiliates him in a Oedipal sense. He gets like the cheap laugh lines, but he also has some funny things where at one point Oz is trying to kind of like be kind of show off in front of. Heather, his new love interest, and is like, you're being so insensitive. And Stifler's just, he goes, what? Like, he's just so confused in his face. I just. He does have a very expressive face. I don't know if I ever found anyone who was a teenager in this movie funny at all. I spent yeah. the entire movie mostly stone faced. And I wasn't like resisting. I was just like, I, is anyone going to make any semblance of a joke at any point? Aside, I mean, the cum was doing a lot of the work in the beer scene, but no one actually made a joke, it felt like, for the entire movie. There's a couple, like, there's, like, little lines. It's more delivery than actual lines. Like, they're not set up punchline, but the choir guy who does come back later, you know, the one that we were talking about that pops out of nowhere, I think it's when Oz says, I'll take the solo. He just, like, under his breath goes, like, dick. Like, <laughs> yeah, that, that's how we know he's, he needs his comeuppance. That was pretty funny. That was it? <laughs> that, just, that was the funny part? Just the part? delivery of dick. I felt like I, the only things I laughed at in this movie were, again, oh, go ahead. You had another one. Well, uh, Jim, at one point when he's, uh, I think he's when he's going to knock on the door because Nadia's, or not knock on the door, but just walk in because he knows mm-hmm. Nadia's in there pleasuring herself. He goes, oh boy, oh crap, oh no. Like just the way he says it. It kind of sounded like Eugene Levy, actually. I, uh-huh. I liked that. It kind of seemed like he was channeling his TV dad. I think my favorite line in this uh, was not funny on its own merit, but because it was delivered by Chris Klein, uh, he said this to Mina Suvari, and this actually worked on her. He said, I just realized I didn't know anything about you, and I was interested. <laughs> it's like, I am a human male. I am interested in your species. <laughs> what? Yeah. And again, not necessarily a funny line, but the delivery was good. Allison Hannigan. Not the famous line where she says one time paying him, but when they're having coitus and she says, say my name, bitch. (laughs) (laughs) And it's pretty funny. It's out of nowhere. And he's like, what? It's pretty good delivery. Yeah, uh, she does a good job with the little she's given. Well, she's actually probably given, of all the women in this movie, I feel like she's given the most, maybe aside from Stifler's mom. She might be my, I don't know. It's either, I guess it's got a, Eugene Levy is not a surprise, but Eugene Levy might be Catherine O'Hara, maybe... I don't know. Allison Hannigan was pretty good, too. I don't know. I did have one Eugene Levy (laughs) line because, like you were saying, I should have mentioned this earlier, but like you were saying, he's obviously a little uncomfortable and he's trying to, you know, put Jim at ease. And he he says, ah, look at this picture of us that we got last year or something. And it's this really awkward, like awkward family photos. Like they're all sort of leaning on each other, looking off into the distance. And he goes, that was a fun day, wasn't it? I want to talk to you about masturbation. (laughs) (laughs) And it reminded me, that was another instance that actually did remind me of like every time my parents like to space out the sex talks. I got like, it was like a mini series, like over <laughs> what felt like years, but it was probably just over the course of like nine months. I felt like we had three or four like, hey, we wanted to talk to you about this specific aspect of sex now. I'm like, oh my God. Fisting. And they were, <laughs> they were uncomfortable. <laughs> and they always like, it was a very ham fisted introduction. Before you go up upstairs and do your homework i just wanted to talk to you about uh cunnilingus i'm like no need thank you did you notice that the awful band at the prom is playing midnight at the oasis i did and i turned to i i looked at tyler and i went midnight at the oasis and he's like what and i'm like oh in uh, waiting for guffman eugene which also has eugene levy in it Catherine o'hara it's her and fred, fred willard, willard. Yeah. Wood, willard. Midnight at the Oasis. Do you want us to strike the set? We work with Corky all the time, so we know all the terms. <laughs> I was telling Tyler about how Catherine... Let's talk about a better movie. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine O'Hara's character in that, you know, Fred Willard and her act like they're the Taylor and Burton of <laughs> Blaine, Missouri. And they're actually very terrible, but probably the best Blaine has off to offer. But whenever Fred Willard's saying his lines in their audition, she's... She's mouthing, mouthing them. It. Because she's just trying to keep track of where they are. I remember there was a guy in my theater class who, whenever you had a line with him, you could tell like 
He wasn't acting against you. He was just waiting for you to stop talking so he can say the line that he was like sort of muttering under his breath. <laughs> and I'm like, no, just like a person would say the line like you're thinking of it as you're saying it. <laughs> uh, waiting for Guffman's good, huh? Yeah. Back to American Pie. I want to give a just a small shout. It was confusing for the reason that you pointed out earlier, which is like, where did these characters come from? But there's the coach, the lacrosse coach, that's sort of pepping up the team and then yeah. leads to Oz saying, actually, I'm going to leave and, and go do the choir thing. But there's also mm. the assistant coach who just repeats words that the and I actually love that character <laughs> for the two seconds he's in the movie because it's always like, yeah, culmination. He just like <laughs> picks a word from the sentence and says it again. I feel like that's a trope from the, like a teen comedy trope. That like there's some right. like useless dweeby assistant or something like that. I do appreciate really re- grasping at straws here, but it does feel like this is firmly planted in the perspective of the teens. Adults are almost non-existent in this film for as much as they're at school and like doing things. There are, you know, aside from Jim's dad and mom, and then Stifler's mom, I think there's a brief shot, of, there's a, these coaches, and I think we get a brief like conversation from a history teacher. Jim's mom is in it for a second, yeah. Right. But otherwise, like adults are almost non-existent in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like a peanuts, wah, 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 a peanuts wah. thing. Yeah, exactly. I also wanted to point out that something that I didn't even think of the first time I saw it as a teen, but hey, Thomas and Nicholas, you don't have to wait for a book to eat out your girlfriend. I mean, I was so bothered that she was like blowing him and nothing was expected of him just yeah. uh, giving her a blowjob. I was happy. I was watching. I was like, what the fuck is this? What is this? Is this what heterosexuals do? And luckily I was like, ah, oh, thankfully, thankfully learned the tongue tornado or whatever the hell it was called, <laughs> which looks like you just sort of motorboat it from what I could gather. <laughs> Try it. You know, people are made all sort of different ways and shapes and like all kinds of different things. You got to try some things. True. I will say Thomas and Nicholas was the hottest of the four boys, I decided, because he kind of got those druggy eyes I like. He also seemed like the most normal looking. He looked like a teenager. I'd like to strike that from that because now I just said he was the hottest and he looked like a teenager. Siffler's mom walks in. (laughs) He's very cute and he looks like just a normal high school student who'd be in here, not Chris Klein, who is like 20 feet tall, the shoulders like across a room and then the hair of a kid going to Easter services. When it is, we were talking about the girls getting short shrift and part like there's not, we get Natasha Leone and and Tara Reid's friendship, or at least Natasha Leone trying her damnedest <laughs> to yeah. have chemi- friendship chemistry with Terry. Still doesn't pass the Bechdel test because they're just talking, they're just about, talking boys about boys. just talking about boys. But like, we never see Michelle and Allison Hannigan with anything other than her boy band nerds. I, there might be a girl in the band nerd group. I don't. They're yeah. so nameless and faceless that, that it, I don't remember. But they're not like friends. They're like a Greek chorus behind her. There's like girls that are like around Shannon Elizabeth, the, the Nadia, the foreign exchange student, like at the party, but you never, we never like have any lines from them no lines so you can pay them the day rate don't worry yeah about there's it. there's like a girl who talks about finch and like there's just like there's not like really yeah. an equivalent of our i don't think we need like four girls that are like the opposite of our boys. you want the chipettes i just like uh you got the chipmunks and the chipettes i just want them to be fully fleshed out characters is what i really want not interested says american Pie. well and they're not really interested to be like, I guess I'm not really interested in the boys, not really either. Interested in boys being fully fleshed out characters either. But I do think that's kind of in line with this kind of raunchy teen comedy movie. Like, I don't it's not like they come from a long line of super well fleshed out characters. Right. I don't think that necessarily I mean, even a rough sketch would be fine. Like, yeah. I guess Chris Klein's the jock, but the rest of them are all just like, blah, blah, blah. yeah. And the one drinks coffee. So then the one drinks coffee and wears blazers. Is there anything else you want to say? I, I feel like I'm I'm le- leading up to the. <sighs> To the verdict. I don't have a whole lot else. Begging Thomas and Nicholas to eat out Tara Reed. <laughs> Chris Klein has terrible hair. Tara Reed has great hearing. I don't know why I wrote. Oh, she was able to hear like a, a snide comment Thomas and Nicholas said oh, from like across a crowded kitchen where the fucking bare naked ladies are playing full blast. She can hear them from across the room. It's deranged. Yep, it's, it's like been. a Shakespearean. It's, been, it's like a Shakespearean moment. I'm like, how did she hear him? To be fair, he's a 17-year-old or whatever, just probably shouting. Probably screaming. Yeah. yeah, suck me beautiful I have here. Why come in the beer? Yeah, I blame Nadia here for not just changing and getting out, so it's kind of her fault. Yeah, let's get out of here. All right. Let's go to the verdict. <laughs> 
DJ, what do you think of this movie? Well, I have some nominees. I don't know where to put oh, yeah. this nominee, but I got to give props to the soundtrack. And it's only just because of when it was. <laughs> I was also 17 when this movie came out. And so these are very like formative songs that were very of the time. There's Semi Charmed Life. There's Tonic. You wanted more. There's a. Uh, <laughs> more room. There's yeah, there's Harvey Danger. Flagpole sit up by Harvey, yeah. Harvey Danger. There's One Week by Bernie Ladies. It was a big BNL fan. I, the straightest thing about me is I was also a BNL <laughs> fan for, for a, an extended period. I don't know where to give that. A, I just want <laughs> you to want to give that. that the Catherine O'Hara Award, or you want to give that the Sally Field Award? I feel like Catherine O'Hara's got to be Eugene Levy. Yeah, I'm kind of torn. Not our heroes. None of them will be Catherine O'Hara yeah. winners. I'll be damn sure for any movie they ever do, they will never be Catherine O'Hara winners. <laughs> Yeah, I will give it to Eugene Levy. It's appropriate. I, think. I can second that. To give Catherine O'Hara to Eugene. Yeah, Levy. give it to John and Moira Rose United at last. I'll give it to Eugene Levy. I think, I mean, Jennifer Coolidge is fun in that sort of, again, because the perspective is a teenage perspective, yeah. it is very charming when she shows up and she's sort of this. In the beginning of the movie, she's Chekhov's mom that's just <laughs> waiting, waiting for uh, for her to show up. And when she does, it, it does work. Yeah, there's like a creepy aspect to it, but it works enough for me. And they they got it wriggled out of the legality problem. Yeah. So good on them. But yeah, I'll, I'll second that. Do you want to talk about the movie or do you have a Sally Field scene? I don't have one that I can the think of. The tongue tornado? I, no. Remember when she said, I'm coming and, it, and her dad was like, oh, good. Yeah. Didn't that just make you laugh because no. she was coming and she meant it one way and, and uh, the father took it another way? I want to I want to get Natasha Leone in there, but I, I did, she didn't have like a single scene that really like. I mean, yeah, she was coasting on just I don't mean coasting like she wasn't doing a good job, but like if anyone else played that character, it would have been just as forgettable as all the yeah. other characters in this. The fact that Natasha Leone just from her own force of personality just brings in. I'm like, what's her story? What's she doing? Yeah. Can we Tell hang out with her, her some more? She sounds like she smokes a pack a day. She's 17 years old. Let's hang out. I don't even know if I have a Sally Field. We don't have to. D- we could give a Storm Award if you want to. Ooh. To Oz? To, the, to Chris Klein? Well, no, to- no, no. To Shannon Elizabeth's scene. Because it's so offensive. Oh, just for being, not for her bad acting, but just for being offensive. Yeah. It's sure. not, yeah, it's for that. Yeah. We could come up with a new award, the Jason Biggs Memorial Offensive <laughs> Scene Award. I actually have thought that we shouldn't have named it the Storm Award for the worst scene or the worst moment of the movie. We should have named it the Four Hobbits Jumping on a Bed Award. Oh, yes. Because that's really a terrible scene in an otherwise good movie. That's not the case here. Yeah. Don't get high on your laurels, American Pie. Okay, I will have to draw Four Hobbits Jumping on a Bed. (laughs) Oh, oh no. Oh, no. You'll have to draw (laughs) characters from your favorite thing. I'll just pull it. I'll just pull it from my stores that I already have. (laughs) So anyway, the movie. All right, this fantastic movie. Hold on, I'm writing Catherine O'Hara, Eugene, and Bad Award, whatever, to be determined. I do like the Four Hobbits Jumping on a Bed Memorial uh, (laughs) Bad Scene Award. Bad Scene Award. Oh yeah, Nadia's Revenge Porn. All right, you want to do your verdict? Yeah, so I was worried that this movie wouldn't hold up. That in today's world where... Consent mm-hmm. is important, and women are somehow three-dimensional people with their own lives. When and we wants finally got that technology desires. to make women three-dimensional, it was amazing. What a breakthrough, but unfortunately, after American Pie was released. <laughs> and I was right. This movie, <laughs> I was more charmed than I think I expected, but the guys don't, they kind of a little bit learn a lesson, but it's not really, they more just kind of get what they want, just in a way that they didn't expect. Which I guess is a lesson, but not necessarily the lesson that people should be taking away from a situation like this. You're in a child's an idiot. I don't think I like I think if this was special to you, like if you were our age or around our age and you like were like, yeah, that was pretty funny when I was a teenager, just let it be there in your memory. Cause I don't think bringing it back up is gonna do anybody any good. Everybody in the movie just they seem to be doing fine. They're all okay. Okay. Let's just let them be. Jason Biggs uh, twittered himself out of work. Tara Reid, you okay? Uh, Tara Reid had a rough go. And that was gross because that was, you know, one of those attractive teen actress gets kind of too much media attention and doesn't know what to Mm -hmm. do with it. And then not to say some of that isn't her 
you know, decisions, but it's also kind of gross the whole way it's whole, like the plastic surgery stuff and speculation. It's like, that's gross. Oh God, I, I don't, yeah. I don't uh-huh. it, like it's her. I don't care. But all that to say, don't watch this movie. It's bad. You're not an idiot. What do you think, Damon? You know, I mean, going into a teen raunchy comedy, you know. It also wasn't that funny. Some... Let me let me just jump back in. If it was really funny, I think I could have let uh, you know. You know, you know me. I let a lot of shit slide. If you make me laugh, you love a good chuckle. You've always said that yeah. about yourself. You love love a guffaw. You like a belly laugh. Not that funny. Okay, back to you. Sorry. I was just about to say, yeah. When you go into a teen sex comedy, you hope that it's raunchy. And you hope that it's funny. This movie. I guess, I mean, it's not even, I, I mean, it's offensive. Like, the, the Nadia stuff is offensive. I mean, there's the cum. Otherwise, it's not really that funny. It doesn't even seem to attempt to be funny. It seems to be coasting on the fact that, like, aren't you uncomfortable, like, watching these teenagers, like, sort of fumble all over the place? Eugene Levy is a bright spot, but otherwise, this movie is just boring a lot of the time. And it reminded me of just a lot of how we do not consider women's sexuality whatsoever. Part of that is the theme of the movie. I mean, I think that is somewhat what the boys may learn near the end, but it doesn't feel like the movie's really trying to lean into that. It's just sort of like, ah, this. it feels like the sappy moment at the end of a sitcom or, ah, we gotta do the girl shit now. Get it out of the way. But this isn't a good movie. Honestly, I mean... I would list it as a forgettable movie more than a bad movie. I think if it hadn't been like the thing that brought like raunchy sex comedies back to life in the late 90s, it would be otherwise completely forgettable. Yeah. Do you think, did you learn anything from the unrated version that you accidentally rented that you want? Oh, to yeah. I'm, I am curious. I am curious. What, how much of Shannon Elizabeth's nipples did you get on your screen? Oh, all of them. Yeah. We'll okay, but like, were they just like there in the corner of your screen, like for extended periods of time? Not disembodied. I mean, they were still attached to the rest <laughs> of her body. They weren't just like floating, just floating around. around. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. I felt She's like that. Naked. Like she was always so. She is naked. I mean, she does take her top off, and I remember that from the original. But I mean, I didn't remember. She's just sort of like leaning on the bed, and just like her her tits are still like in frame the entire mm. time. I'm like, is this from the? Is this? Is this what happens in the? I, I don't know what else would have been cut from this. Do, do, when he fucks the pie, what did you see in this version? <laughs> well, there's a consent scene where he talks to the <laughs> pie, and the pie's like pretty cool with it. Pie's into it. No, I mean, he's just on top of it. It looks like Wiley e. Coyote had fallen on it. That's what it looks like. I'm like, is this your, is this your preferred position? Because that's not going to be good. But it's just like you sort of see his butt, but like it's sort of covered by his like oversized bowling shirt that he insists on wearing for everything. So you don't really see much. We all made a lot of mistakes in 99. <laughs> <laughs> if you wait a little bit, I think they're on the way back. So you just you get them out of the vacuum seal packs. You got them in your your attic. Hey, Gen Z, you don't listen to this. If you're, you're not listening to this, but if you are. They've already. They already. If you are. This 90s thing. I know it's too late. You're already into it. Don't do this to yourselves. We already did this. Sherman, aside from his hair, I mean, he was dressed like uh, half of the New Yorker kids that I saw on the subway. Just complete jinkos, tight top. Don't do done. this. Don't do this. Looks like a You're going to regret it. In the theatrical cut, I guess, he's mm-hmm. doing, he, you only see him from behind on the counter. He's not like fully on top of the pie. He just gives a couple thrusts and you see him from behind. Oh, really? There's more, okay. am- there's more ample pie fucking in the unrated version. I mean, the crust is all over the place. And then later, apparently he and his father have reassembled the pie into the tin, are sitting at a table, and they're like, let's say, let's tell your mother we ate it all. Yeah. But I was like, why do you, pu- why do you guys take the, the time to put it all back in the tin? They just, just had to reflect. Curious. They just had to reflect. Yeah. yeah. That's a father-son activity. What do you think, everybody? Email us, your inner child is an idiot at gmail.com. You can text us or leave us a voicemail, 615-576-0525. We want to thank our friend Russ Weaver for the use of his song Top of the Two for our ad music. We want to thank Jackson Has an Unhealthy Obsession with Damon for our Damon's Problematic Corner music. <laughs> if you want to support the show, you can go to patreon.com slash your inner child is an idiot. Oh, I forgot to say, we still are, are still doing a survey. Oh, yeah. If you want to... Please, we have a 2023 recap episode that we did. You can only get it by filling out our survey. So go to the link and the whatnot and take the survey and get a free episode. And that's the only place you can get it. And that would really help us as we gather information. And we want to thank our patrons. If you want to support the show, patreon.com slash your inner child is an idiot. And we want to thank our curtain patrons, including a Little Miss Chicken Nugget. Just Cuz. Lindsay Halleck. Scalvasaurus. James Taylor. T. Smith. 
Article Man. The supreme ruler of this podcast. Karen Curd. The Zesty. Larissa Maestro. Dramatically placed hot dog. Jeremy Palin. Travis Vance. Bill Haynes. Uh, Dr. Malcolm's heaving bosom. Shit on the cartouche. Tommy Boy is my favorite movie. His Honor the Mayor. Captain Jean-Luc Picard. The Hands of Fate. Jackson has an unhealthy obsession with me. <laughs> Jonathan Day. Women's <laughs> Australian accent. <laughs> Heather Tuggle. Beth Sermont. Lindsay Nell. David Mort. Caroline Amberson. The elusive fan Gromkin. Zachary Hartley. And Josh Frigo. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all very much. If you want to support like them, patreon.com slash your inner child is an idiot. It's been... Oh, that guy also had a cocaine problem. I think that's the other guy. That was uh, Stephen Page. Yeah, not the not Ed. Not Ed. Stephen had to leave the group. When one of the two main guys, the main singers, uh, left Bare Naked Ladies and they just like kept going. Everybody's like, all right. They're like, we're going to do uh, the Big Bang Theory. We're going to coast on that Big Bang Theory life for a while. Get that BBT money, baby. <laughs> it's almost like the Shrek song a little bit. You can just get me going with it. Some. Whereas somebody. <laughs>